Are you looking for the best lenses for astrophotography? In this video, we will look at some of the 5 best lenses on the market. Before we get started with our video, we have included links in the description. So make sure you check those out to see which one is in your budget range. Number 1. Rockinon 14mm f 2.8 if EDUMC. The Rockinon 14mm f 2.8 if EDUMC is a typical example of how should a lens look and perform like, without asking from you to spend thousands of dollars to have an option to have fantastic results in terms of shooting astrophotography. To begin with, this unit is exceptionally versatile, it is compatible with all Nikon cameras that are based on a full-frame slash APS-C sensor and if you've been looking to upgrade your shooting arsenal, then you can start doing so with this lens. Design-wise, this unit has an excellent build quality, and the reason behind this is the use of metal. As a matter of fact, this model has an all-metal design that does not only look luxurious, but it is very reliable, and known for withstanding daily use. In addition, its focusing ring is strategically positioned between the trailing edge of the lens hood and the aperture range, and for your information, it is 35mm wide and it is wrapped in a double band of ridged rubber that will guarantee you a higher level of comfort. When it comes to the elements, this particular model has 18 elements arranged in 12 groups, of which you can find a single hybrid aspherical element, three high refractive index elements, one glass aspherical element, and two ED elements. When we combine all of them into one, this means that you won't notice distortion or any kind of chromatic aberrations. Now, let's talk about performance. What makes the 14mm f 2.8 if EDUMC be ideal for astrophotography is its fast aperture, 14mm f 2.8, which distributes a frame-fitting, ultra-wide rectilinear view on one side, whereas, the presence of the UMC multi-coating will be there for you to put an end to the flare and ghost so that you can get the best possible contrast and transmission of light. To be even more precise, since this is an ultra-wide angle f 2.8 lens, the Rokian will offer you an 115.7 degree view on full-frame cameras, and let's not forget the low coma which is more than ideal for shooting night sky imagery. Last, but not least, I've been reported by those who've been shooting with this lens that the output is exceptionally sharp, whereas, its autofocus is accurate, and the overall quality of the colors are lifelike. On the internet, you will find plenty of samples, so you can see this by yourself. To conclude, if you're keen on investing in a lens that offers a great value for its cost, then the Rockinon 14mm f 2.8 if EDUMC would be an excellent option for you. Number 2. Sigma 18 to 35 mm f 1.8 RDC HSM. The Sigma 18 to 35 mm f 1.8 RDC HSM is a very unique lens. In fact, some people consider it as a technological marvel because this is the first zoom lens that has an exceptionally fast slash wide aperture. At the same time, if you're shooting with a Canon camera, then great news for you as well. Speaking of the design, the Sigma utilizes a strong construction that consists of the rugged brass mount, metal barrel which is made of a so-called thermally stable composite material which makes this lens highly capable to be used in both cold and hot temperatures without interfering with its performance at all. Additionally, there are 17 elements divided into 12 groups along with 5 low dispersion and 4 aspherical elements, so as you can see, the manufacturer took the job very seriously. In terms of the features, the 18-35mm f1.8 RDC HSM comes equipped with a ring-type, ultrasonic AF motor that has full-frame manual focusing and a 72mm filter size, a constant 1.8 aperture which basically means that its low-light capabilities are indeed overwhelming and let's not forget the manual override. Interestingly, the manual override will help you focus manually very quickly if you're working in an AF mode. Those who've been shooting with this lens claim that it takes less than a second for this lens to get from the closest focus to infinity, and at the same time, the AF motor is nearly silent. Therefore, I don't have any remarks for now. What also got my attention regarding this lens is its sharp output regardless of the aperture, since even at f 1.8 the chromatic aberration, distortion and vignetting are non-existent, and if you decide to shoot with this lens, I'm sure that you will instantly notice this. For instance, at f 1.8 and f 1.28, the resolution and the overall sharpness is top-notch, and chromatic aberration can't be noticed when shooting at smaller apertures at f 1.8. Sounds nice, doesn't it? 
Another great thing about this unit is the presence of its 9-blade rounded diaphragm that will help you achieve excellent bokeh results if you feel that you need that, so, aside from shooting astrophotography, you will be able to shoot portrait, landscape, and other types of photography without any problems. Overall, I strongly recommend you giving the Sigma 18-35mm f1.8 RDCHSM a try, because it is worthy of considering and having, mainly because of its terrific low-light performance and its ability to minimize ghosting, flare, distortion, and chromatic aberration without having to spend a fortune. Number 3. Zeiss Battis 25mm f-2. The Zeiss Battis 25mm f-2 is a focus wide-angle lens that would be a really good option if you're an owner of any of Sony's A7-A6XXX models, due to the fact that this unit packs numerous features and has a very strong design that makes it pretty adequate to serve you in a long term. When it comes to the design, this model has a compact, yet sturdy body, whose external metal shell is made of durable, anodized aluminum, whereas, its internal components are made of a combination of composite and metal. As you can see, this lens can easily withstand daily use. If we take this aside, the Battis 25mm f-2 employs 10 elements in 8 groups, and on its aperture ring, there is even an OLED display that will keep you notified regarding the approximate focus distance, whereas, on the front, you can easily notice a 67mm filter thread, so, for the design part I'm very satisfied. Speaking of the performance, the Battis 25mm f-2 is very sharp in the center and on the edges, but, its wide-open performance at infinity may cause you some chromatic aberration, however, this may not drastically reduce the overall image quality. If you think that the image needs correction, then you can apply some in-camera or post-camera correction whether you've shot JPGs or RAW format images, but keep in mind that the overall, sharpness and contrast are indeed good for a wide-angle prime lens. Moreover, the flare is inevident in most of the situations, and the reason behind this is the anti-reflective coating, although you may find some minor ghosting effects though. But, where the manufacturer hit a jackpot is at the coma performance. Namely, even at f-2, the amount of coma is barely noticeable which means that you will be more than satisfied to shoot photography of the stars during the night. In terms of the bokeh performance, I have to inform you that the Battis is great here thanks to its 9 rounded aperture blades which will help you achieve excellent bokeh results if you use the lens and camera right. Those who've had a chance to shoot with this camera claim that they were satisfied with this lens, and I hope that you will be as well if you ever decide to purchase it. Finally, the autofocus is quiet and quick, and what's even better is that this unit covers the full frame of the A7 cameras, and honestly, I couldn't expect anything less by a Zeiss. In conclusion, you would greatly improve your shooting experience if you decide to purchase this lens, and trust me, in case you do that, you will be more than satisfied to own such a powerful lens as a part of your shooting arsenal. Number 4. Tamron SPAFA 012C700. The Tamron SPAFA 012C700 is often named as the world's first f/2.8 image stabilized, ultra-wide-angled zoom lens that is specifically designed to work in conjunction with full-frame cameras. Even though it was released a couple of years ago, even today, this lens is often the first choice for a variety of different photographers whose favorite style of photography is exactly the astrophotography. From a design perspective, the optical construction of this lens combines 18 elements divided into 13 groups, plus an XGM element that is as set at the front group, whereas, you can also find several LD glass elements that will greatly improve the quality of your shooting. At the inside, there's an ultra-silent drive motor whose purpose is to make this lens fast enough to focus onto a specific target while maintaining noise-free, and what will surely get your attention is the built-in image stabilization which ensures up to four stops of compensation if you prefer to have handheld shooting. But hey, Tamron didn't stop here. They even implemented an adding fluoride coating to the front element to make it withstand water and dirt, along with a weather sealing and a special, so-called E-band coating whose purpose is to provide greater control over the reflections and minimize the occurrences of ghosting and flare as much as possible. Moreover, the performance isn't any different at all. Namely, its wide focal range of 15 to 30 millimeters, its fast 2.8 maximum aperture and the 9-blade round aperture are surely a great addition since the results will be satisfying for you and for everyone who will be seeing them. To be more precise, most of the time you won't notice blur, but pure color accuracy, however, if you want to push this camera to its boundaries, at 100% view, you will notice a bit of blur, but still, images are usable even then. For example, even wide open at f-2.8, 
the Tamron SPAFA 012C700 produces sharp imagery, and you can completely stop down from F-11 to F-22 because, at this level, images will not be heavily affected. In any case, I'd recommend you stick between F-5.6 to F-8 because this is the sweet spot. Before we end, I'd also like you to know that you shouldn't always shoot astrophotography with this lens, because you can experiment, given its close focus distance of 1-1 and its aperture, you can easily to have a fairly good subject background separation with shallow depth of field. After all, I'm sure that you already know how quality this lens is, and therefore, even though you're not obliged to own it, still, the Tamron SPAFA 012C700 can be seen as a strong candidate for astrophotography thanks to its endless capabilities. Number 5. Nikon AFS Nikkor 14-24mm f-2.8 GED. The Nikon AFS Nikkor 14-24mm f-2.8 GED is well known on the market, and you've likely seen this name popping up numerous times on the internet as you were searching for the best lens for astrophotography. Well, you shouldn't be surprised though, because this lens is highly suitable for astrophotography, landscape or architectural photograph, and regardless of the type of photography you'll be shooting, this model will have you completely backed up. In terms of the design, the Nikon AFS Nikkor 14-24mm f-2.8 GED is a result of excellent craftsmanship, and from the moment you take it, you will be amazed by the handling and the way Nikon has crafted this product. Namely, its outer barrel is crafted with a metal alloy, the focus ring is rubberized, and you can also notice dust and moisture seals which will greatly improve the build quality of the lens itself, and make this lens be an excellent companion anywhere you go. In addition, the internal components include two extra low dispersion ED elements, three aspherical lenses, and a nanocrystal coat, which, when combined, will ensure consistent performance while maintaining the sharpness and the overall contrast quality strong even at the widest aperture settings. But that's not all. Nikon has incorporated a so-called silent wave motor which will guarantee you nothing less than an ultra-high-speed autofocusing, and since I've mentioned this, I think that it is the right time to talk about the performance and the features. For your information, the Nikon AFS Nikkor 14-24mm f-2.8 GED is excellent in low-light conditions, since the included motor is pure excellence because instantly, the lens focuses on a specific target and remains quiet. At the same time, the autofocus accuracy is overwhelming, and you can even focus as close as 10.8 at the 24mm setting. Therefore, I have to admit that Nikon has done an excellent job here. Moving on, the sharpness is very strong at 14mm, and if you stop down to f-5.6, you can notice that the center and the midframe performance is indeed good. However, if you zoom at large apertures, the performance fade drops a bit, but once you get to f-5.6, the performance gets strong again. In the end, I'd also like to mention that the ghosting effects and flare are barely noticeable, and the same can be said regarding the distortion, however, at 20mm, the distortion is non-existent and I think that you will be satisfied with the lens when you view from this aspect as well. To summarize, the Nikon AFS Nikkor 14-24mm f-2.8 GED is a top-notch option for photographers that use a camera made by Nikon, and if you have an opportunity to get this lens, do not hesitate to do so.